Societal and political trends are rapidly breaking down the family that once was the cornerstone of our great American culture. At FIT, we know you cannot get this information on your own, so we'll bring it to your TV every single week. And we always invite all opposing views. Divorce Corp, the movie, now available on Netflix, is the best expose on divorce ever done. Frankly, the movie industry has not been honest about divorce in America. Joe Sorgi, Iowan resident and producer, through his own divorce, saw the outrage and was compelled to do something about it. Luckily, he was able to fund the movie with the help of some real established statistics. <clears throat> Our education is researched. Trust us, see the movie. The light is finally shining on the subject of existing corruption and waste inside our courts, which has always been the basis of our programs. And I have with me to discuss the movie Divorce Corp. Um, to my left, Jeff Bloom, who's a divorce mediator. And to his left, Gary Jacobs, president of Americans for Legal Reform and family law reformer. Um, I went to the conference that Joe Sorge put together um, October, I think it was, of last year, 14. And it was just absolutely a, a very good conference, but conceptually it was magnificent. The movie was available early on in the, in the beginning, so I bought the movie, and I saw the movie, and I was compelled to try to do this, and uh, some of our organizations were going to actually play this movie. Um, there's a clip coming up. You'll see, uh, it'll take a minute to just take a look at that clip. It'll set you up for the rest of the program. I think death would be easier than a divorce. It's very frustrating to have gone for help and then come out with your family destroyed. We have serious problems in our family law court system. Getting divorced is far from easy. Litigation lasted for over a year. I was married only four months. And my divorce has lasted over six and a half years. Close to eight years. Eight years. Why is divorce so difficult? People can get as much justice as they can afford. Most people cannot afford any justice at all. What's wrong with that? This is a business. The more you charge, the more people are willing to pay. They didn't give me a lawyer. Pay this $11,000 or go to jail. It really got to the end of the line for me. And I said to the litigants, I want you to know, after two hours, we will have spent more than most people in this courthouse make in a year. Your home, your, your valuables are all going to be sold to pay the lawyers and people like me. Even though I was acquitted, he still made a decision to take my son away from me. His birthday was last week and I didn't get to see him. What you have is a tinderbox and the lawyers are throwing gasoline on that fire. The system is designed to create conflict. I received a phone call for another 25000 He'd be able to give us what we wanted. Extortion? Family court results in more violence than any other area of law. Deaths, suicide, murder. No jury, just the one biased judge. The judge says, even if you win, you have to pay. The whole thing is just insane. Follow the money. The statistics you just saw that were delivered on the trailer to the movie were not only accurate, but they were compelling. And anybody watching this program should have a major push to, uh, if, you, if you're watching our program because you're one of us, you're advocates, and you want to see change, please do watch the movie. You'll get a, a better grip on things that we do every day because some of the things we do, this is a basis for our show. Right. I mean, this is what we do. Okay, you have uh, any statistics you want to pop up there, Jeff? Well, it was an amazing uh, movie. In fact, uh, Chris had recommended I watch it. I've been doing mediation for four years now, and watching this movie just very, very powerful. It really is. And just some of the statistics I wanted statistics I wanted to share was you know no fault divorce uh, was instituted in 1969, although New York didn't have it until 2010. New York's always last to do everything. That's but they was they're saying that prior to 1969 there was an average of 400,000 divorces in the United States. And prior to that time, somebody had to take fault. One spouse had to say you know, abandonment or uh, cruelty, whatever the case may be. When no fault divorce was instituted, it was averaging 1.2 million, million divorces per year after it was instituted. As of January 2014, the average had gone down to about 1 million a year. Now, that's a big, big sure. difference. 
So now there are more divorces because it's easier to get divorced. So there's a, a chance that 50%, you have a 50% chance of getting divorced if you get married, hmm. basically. I don't know if it's because of the no-fault divorce. I think there's also cultural breakdowns Could and be. other issues. It's well, it's cer it certainly signifies a cultural <coughs> change in the, in the reading out of the statistics. Yeah. Who knows gave. what came first, but... Yeah, and but you know that's a, it's a sign of our culture clearly. Right. I, I mean, it could it's probably, I mean, maybe, probably even, both. And even the fact that they made no fault, what message does that send? That hey, you don't want to get divorced? Don't worry about. It. You don't you have to have a reason. Stay married, get divorced. Which, yeah. but it's funny that you mentioned that, Jeff, because you know, just you know, in Suffolk County, there's really almost no such thing as no fault divorce. They don't really live by the law in Suffolk County. If you go in and say I want a no fault divorce, they still go through all the the motion. Like it, they 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 still file the papers with the reasoning. They don't really have a clear no fault. You can't just get divorced in Suffolk County if the other person doesn't want to get divorced. Correct. Well, a no fault divorce hence is is the the definition is both have to agree because I, mean, I file for no fault divorces right. for couples all the time. So right, right. One one person one person can't file for it and the other one disagrees. Well, that's correct. what I mean. People that's can't correct. go to you know people can't just that's say in any county you can't right. So you can't just go there and say hey you know what I don't want it. I don't care if the other person doesn't want it. I don't need a reason. It doesn't happen. Correct. You can't do it. So I just want to clear that up for the people who right. are watching. Basically, one one party has to say there's an irrefutable breakdown of the marriage for six months or longer. They have to be married at least six mm. months or longer, mm. and as long as both sides agree to those terms, then mm. they could file. Right. So if you want to get divorced from your wife and you file no fault divorce, your wife said, "Wait a second, I'm, I'm not agreeing to that." Then you can't. Then can't you have to get a grounds. And then you have to get grounds, or grounds you have to agree. Hearing. You have to have right. an, uh, an agreement. And there's a lot of things that, that right. follow that. What, what I learned out of watching the movie too, I'm not sure that uh, we even talked about this before, but the, the criteria for creating a divorce, uh, there are important factors and th there are legal issues only because we imported them. If you think about what the most important thing is in a divorce, is your children first. What? How do you manage? your children's divorce where are they going to be in the future that's something that doesn't have to be in a in case in a law you don't have to create a custody environment you should always have a plan that the, the, the two the couple can create to make it outside the law and say well this is what I want to do and this is what I want to do and a mediator as, as you and I are we can just simply put it into the kind of language that's that works for them like I said you guys are mediators the system makes it hard for people to use mediation right. because you still got to go through all the courts and many well, times people have a lawyer look it up and you have to put wording which I what bothers me is you have to put wording and you guys know this but people yeah. watching it may not if you guys come to an agreement with people and then you, you do the whole agreement but then in your agreement you still have to put wording if this person won custody here's what they would get if this person got custody well here's not, what that they would get. not that part not that part not that part we don't have to do that the child support standards act has to be put in there right and that's they can what I'm deviate saying. but you have to say child support standards would act be that in that, that area, is. yes. However, they right. wish to deviate, and these are the reasons. But Correct. I don't like that you should, to me, that's a way of saying we don't want to do it, because what's the difference? You're settling out of court. Why should that be in, I don't think that should be the law, that that's in the agreement. If you guys settle, you right. settle. Why, right. why you say? That's what they, presently, that's what's required. Right, right. Yeah. and that's what I'm saying. So I think that's the system is set up not to make it easy yeah. for a mediator. No question about well, it. And by the way, this is just the state before you, I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> this is primarily the state. Yeah, I only know Others, New York State. That's yeah, state. I don't know. Well, about you know, I've had a chance. I worked on a task force for three years in Nassau County, and um, Tom Glott, if you remember him years ago, he was the county executive. He authorized the force, and that was because they were trying to put in a peremptory first position that I'm trying to shoot for now with legislation, and they wanted to see how it would fly. So for three years, we looked at other states' mediation processes, and there were so many that had such a favorable approach to divorce. It became so odd for me to sit back in. That's why I can't look at it anymore. I can't look at the law anymore. I go, oh my God, it doesn't really make any sense. It, and you know, when you, now that you've seen Divorce Corp, you, you realize what I'm up against. And it's what crazy. Gary's talking about with the laws and what the, what should be and what shouldn't be, and you talk about litigation is, is designed to create conflict, not right. resolution. That's right. And there's one lady it in the movie, which it. which is amazing, she was married four months and her divorce took over six and a half years. Oh yeah. My divorce I mean, was, crazy. I was in divorce, I was literally in divorce court longer than my marriage. My, I was in divorce court. I was legally divorced, but I was in the court system, the family law system here in Suffolk County for over 14 years. I wasn't was married, married 14 years. How, how long was well, you Well, I guess it depends, you know, when you start with your day, you follow about 10 years or so, 12 years. 14 years I was in divorce. But how about four months, six and a half years? Right. It's, I mean, it's, that's crazy. It's crazy too. It's, yeah. or, and but that's not, she's not alone, by the way. There are plenty no. of people who have been married for a short period of time and had to go through this extensive right. Uh, well, I, I think one of the things battle. that the movie gets, well, first of all, just seeing it on the big screen and having Dr. Drew Pinsky be the narrator, people say, you know, this guy knows his stuff. He's just not a pissed off father who got screwed. But when you watch all the, the one thing I think you have to get out of it, 
anybody who watches it, it's all about the money. It's yeah. not about the kids. Right, it's not about the, it's all about now if, the money. If you look at everything, this, came down to the money. Absolutely. If you look at the movie, a fifty billion dollar year industry. Is yeah. I think right. I think that was they were saying what it is. Billion, right. right. It's an industry, Absolutely. and that's the word industry. Yeah. This is an industry. If that went away, a lot of people are out of jobs. Yeah. Well, this is what I always used to say, that they, every year there's a, another expanding area of the parking lot in the, at the courthouse. There's yeah. always, they keep uh, growing. At, and they make you come back all the time. So I mean, what, would, what, they, what they can all avoid is to mediate for uh, first, because most of the people who mediate will uh, escape, <clears throat> escape the trauma of courts. Right. Well, see, the way the system is designed is no matter what, the attorney's going to get the money. So you come in, either spouse or both, they go to their separate attorneys and get a net worth statement. And then it comes, you start running out of money, and the attorney says, wait a second, okay, we'll put a property lien on your house. You got to sell this, you got to do that. And at the point where you run out of money, and somebody's forced to sign a stipulation that's settlement, the end of you justice. Know, you're done. But that's you the end of your justice, you could have done from the beginning. Well, it's also easier, because there's no money, more money to fight about. I mean, right. I'm li but it's true. Right. I've had couples come to me in mediation, or even in an intake, and then one will come to me later on and say, well, he or she, or she doesn't want to do this. This was an example that, I, that just recently happened. She decided not to go to mediation because she said she's going to take me for all I got. Yeah. So I said, so you're the money spouse, and you're going to be stuck paying for the legal fees. And, and say to her, I said, so what, so what good does that do? Let's say she gets everything she wants. And she gets, you know, X amount a month for child support, X amount a month for maintenance. And at some point, that money's going to dry up because all other money was spent in a legal system. And then she's got to take it back to court. She's got to pay another attorney. The attorney wants his fees first anyway. What's the sense? What, what's the sense in the, um, getting the emotion involved when you could settle everything for a lot less money and there's more to be divvied up at the end? Well, it is common sense, but when you're going through this, people don't think common well, sense. Well, because the lawyers play on the emotions right. of, of the party. They're the best salespeople out there. I say, if you want a good salesperson, yeah, yeah. get a lawyer, a no, divorce lawyer. A lawyer. No, sometimes, and you know what? Sometimes the word of mouth connects to people, too. So some people who may not necessarily have had a lawyer know that someone in their family or a friend has had one and that there was something involved in that divorce and that caused them to be upset and support their mem their friend and member when when you're supporting somebody to stay in the system you're not doing them any favors let me make that clear <laughs> i'm sure well, you know you that know, just like people always say you know when somebody's they say oh, i'm losing they say you got to get the biggest prick of a lawyer you need a son of a bitch who's going to go well, all that does it costs you, cost more, you money, more money, escalates the situation, Absolutely. they start a war with the letters, and then what do you think your spouse is going to do? They're going to go, I need a son of a bitch like they got a son of a bitch. Right. I, I, I need more of an asshole than the other guys got. Absolutely. No, there's it's, no end. There, there is right. no end, and it's absolute craziness. And you have that issue where there's no attorneys don't have any skin in the game to resolve the issue. No, because the money's no, it's opposite. There. Now, there are some cases where you need litigation, obviously. It's, it's not totally, I don't think, out of the realm of possibility and, and not a need. Not well, what totally. would you think someone totally. would need litigation? I mean, most stuff okay. is statutory anyway. Okay, well, let's say you got a domestic abuse issue. Or a complicated okay. Okay. Well, that might sure. That might not work in mediation because the, right. the, the less powerful spouse is going to agree to everything just not to piss off the other one, and so that's not a fair deal. Right. So yeah, that's but, you know, one doing case. Doing the mediation, you can settle that. It takes, I find that that doesn't interfere with my, I'm very disappointed that in all cases they want to discourage that. He, he, he can chime in with this, but. Jeff, you know what I'm talking about. They have all, more domestic violence programs that we need to learn what not to do in that scenario pretty much puts us out of the ballpark. Right. But I, I had one, and it was clear that there was one. I stuck with it and got rid of it very quickly. In three months, they were divorced, and she was happy. And There's some and you can't do. It all depends on the level. It really but does. You know, when you're sitting down communicating, you, well, maybe. You have to be careful. Yeah, maybe. But the, the discussion... Uh, Allevi alleviates the problem very often because they're involved in what to do with the kids and not thinking about what, how I'm upset about her asking me for Well, a if you can get them focused on that instead of where a lawyer would it, get them focused on destroying the other yeah, person. Yeah. If you can, as a mediator, you guys can direct their focus well, towards, that's what we do. listen, maybe he, he did abuse you, you know, that's bad, but that's not what you're there for. Well, we certainly can't say that. Once we say that, right. we're in trouble. Right, you know, but, and, yeah. but that's not really, but that's you're, the right you're not idea. there to stop the abuse. They're done. And you can right still idea. have, you know, couples could still have consulting attorneys during the mediation process, and it's mm. still less expensive than going through litigation. So, process. That sometimes scares me because it depends who they go to. A lot depends. of times, somebody can go to get a consultant, and the lawyer go, "Wait, you could have got more Not, uh, if you well, went to court." So it depends who they go to. There are mediation friendly attorneys out there. Right. That I work well, that's with. what I'm saying. Depends who yeah. they go to. <laughs> And I, I question the validity of that. I know we've, we've talked about this And before. we disagree on it. Uh, yeah, I don't points. have the same values. Well, system. I don't like anybody going to a lawyer personally. Because well, to me, what's the difference? If it's right for you, it's right for you. I'm sure there are some, but I don't deny that there are some 
lawyer mediators who are kind to the mediation. Not so much lawyer mediators, mediation friendly attorneys. There's a difference. I mean, we know there's Robert Hiltzik, Judy Powell is very good. We know some that would say, hey, I'm glad you guys went to mediation and worked it out. What I don't like is the attorneys who say they're mediators and don't have any training. Because technically speaking, litigation is the opposite of mediation. Absolutely. I personally don't completely opposite. Attorney litigators to me is a scam. Because a lot yeah. of times they say, oh, I just I just want to get that piece of the pie. I don't want the other guy getting the piece of the right. pie. That's At the right. end of the day, I'm an attorney and I like fighting in court. Because I have somebody right now who's going to an attorney mediator. And she went to the spouse and said, well, just so you know, you should settle this. Because if she goes to court, they're going to get a lot more money in court. Why would you say that? Yeah, right. really. You shouldn't Why would you even that. say it? Tell them if you go to court, you're going to lose all your money on legal fees. You're going to go through a horrible forensic. And the both you are sitting right now looking at each other. Once you go out of court, you guys are going to want to kill each You'll never sit in a birthday party at a kid's birthday party. <laughs> true no, that. listen, how many people go to court and after five years, they're not going to the family birthday party oh, together. Right. But you guys do mediation. I know you've both done them where after the divorce is over, they could still have family birthday parties you together. You know what? You don't hear from them second. There's something about the calming effect of a mediation right. process that takes them out of the need to have to beat the crap because out of you each have, other. Because once you haven't, once you destroyed somebody so bad in court, there ain't no going back. That's you right. You can't put those That's, words back in your mouth. I'm glad you said that I was about to get there. That's the thing that bothers me most about litigation is that the, there's a lot of relitigation because anger dis never dissipates. Right. But you can't put back it doesn't what you go did. Away. You can't right. put back the papers that you wrote right. and made up a false allegation Absolutely. against the person. You can't ever take it back. Right. And for our listeners out there, I mean, they, we, they've heard these arguments before on, on other shows. You have to watch Divorce Corp to see right. other things that go on. I've been doing this four years, and I learned things that were like I was, I was beside myself. Well, I like yeah. that they had people actually admitting it. You know, you have one guy. Oh, this is what I sure. do. Yeah. You know, you had attorneys. Basically, I think guy driving Rolls Royce. Right. The, the, the investigator. And I think Rolls -Royce. there was a judge who even said, <laughs> if you listen to who they talked to, the difference of and you heard how these lawyers were like, hey, let them fight it out. You know, that's what we're there for, to yeah, protect see, the, them. The key, we you, you just brought up the most we're, important point, I think. Most people don't recognize that a lawyer has, w w they're, they're okay to be honest about their ripping you off. That's weird, isn't it? Well, it's freaking weird. Right. Well, here's <laughs> something they're comfortable with. It, but I think I they mean, want to be, be on TV, that? so they said it. Here's something to think about. In a criminal trial, you're entitled to an attorney if you can't afford one. In a family court, you're not. Yeah. And judges will, and Gary's talked about this before, will discourage you from representing yourself, right. make you get an attorney, make you spend all your money, whatever's left. And so it's not a fair process. Mm. Which, and the funny thing it. about that, there's actually case law that you are entitled in New, York, in New York State. If you're in a custody fight, you're entitled, if you can't afford it, to an yeah, attorney. A, yeah, what do they call it? But protocol, they don't appoint it. Protocol, they don't appoint but it. But you are entitled to it. If a mm. certain case, the, the reason they don't is they say, well, it's all intertwined with domestic and with money, which you're not entitled to it for that. But for custody, you are entitled, entitled by statute to, uh, by, by case law yeah. in New York, but they don't want to give it. Can you guys think of anything that you saw in the movie? Because you guys recently saw it. I saw it some time ago that you know we, we haven't just talked about. Was there anything about one, This was the one thing that got me, the, I still remember, and I, and I saw it, I think, I guess it's a year and a half ago in New York City. One of the things that got me was that when they showed these people who had these child support bills, and they said, I owe $300,000 in child support. And then the guy says, well, how much do you make a year? He said, I make 50000 a year. I mean, it was some crazy, yeah. like, it was like four years of his growth. How does this happen <laughs> yeah. that a guy can owe now we have cases here on, on Long Island. We have, we, you've had them on your show, where people making now forty or fifty thousand a year and a four hundred thousand dollar money judgment against them. Right? How yeah. ridiculous! Listen, yeah, you don't have to. Go. You have to just have some common sense. But with these freaking idiot judges out in Suffolk County, specifically, how do you not say, "Wait, let's just take a step back"? Yeah. This guy's being set up to go to jail. You know, they, you just use the, the the key word, step back. They don't know what that is. And besides, yeah. when you did that, you'd have to alter the decisions they've already made. They well, can't I think it's common sense, and they don't. They, you know what? They removed them. We were talking earlier on um, a previous show about people removing themselves from it, and I think. In order to, to destroy lives like a lot of these judges do out here, you have to, re how would you sleep at night if you went home saying, you know what, I just broke up a family when that, when that father was wanting to have shared custody or that mother wanted what? shared custody. I broke up a family. You know, you That's know, horrible. And the judges, excuse me, uh, and right. the judges who make decisions and they say they make decisions based on the best interests of the children, who knows what's in the best interests of the children better than, than mom and dad? Mom Not and a dad. judge. Sure, I always well, say do, that. Do you want to, do you, would you want the government, which is the, the judge, making a decision on who's the best parent? No, share it. 
and listen, we're not, none of us are great, are perfect, not, none of us are perfect parents. Yeah, cool. And what I think is good and what you think is good is to may be totally different. Some people believe in more strong punishment. Some people are more liberal. That's what makes You know, I, I interviewed great. two family court judges who were running for election coming up. And, and after the program, because I had to try to be soft about because they can't say too much. So you go, once you're a sitting judge, you can't come on the air. So I was trying to be en entertaining about what I think is important. And what's important, as I was going along, I was realizing I was putting them on the spot a little bit. They did a great job in responding. But after the show, we sat and had a little conversation. The crew had even said, this was the best conversation. Too bad you couldn't put it on the air. They were asking me questions as an advocate who hears for 15 years the people complaining and as a mediator how to settle cases. They were asking me. The point I want the audience to hear about that subject is they're training for an office, or it's basically an office. They're being elected for that office, and they're going to preside over families. Where do you get the training for that? What, what is involved in the training for that? Right. Is it going to be on-the-job training, like I hear it is often, that they put the judges on a well, family what, court row before you go into anything else? That's what it is. That's like else. the lowest. Uh, yeah, so, so hardest difficult and, and, thing and honestly, you get through. You, what, what kind of training should they get? If they're deciding custody, should they be psychologists? I, Sociologists? I what threw the joint custody the thing at it. them. I said, listen, what, what parent is not going to want to share share the kid post To me, that person should lose if the custody. That person, right. If that person wants sole custody, they shouldn't be right. getting custody. Amen to that, Chris. <laughs> I say that to anybody watching the show. Yeah. I think you're a crappy parent. <laughs> if you, no, seriously, you're a crappy parent if you want to take the kid and, and make your, your, uh, your spouse see that kid 15% of the time because you're doing damage to the child. Yeah. It's not one right step and you're doing further, it for the money. One Do it step for the further, what made you God that you can suddenly make that decision that you're a better parent? And that's on both sides, men and fathers. On both sides. Anybody yeah, who does I didn't it, say male or female. Right. Either He's way, it doesn't parent. matter. You can be an idiot on both Absolutely. sides of the equation. But never exclude the other parent. No. That's the key message. But Don't exclude. And another main issue, we were talking about parenting, is in the litigation system, and it, it covers it in the movie, that the false allegations of abuse. And the yeah, courts oh, yeah. have to err on the side they use of... use it as a tool. Have to err on the side of... of course um, what's the word? Well, of, if they're on the side of caution. Of and, caution. Right. And, and because they, cause they don't want to be the person in the news who... Right. They gave 100 orders of protection. They said, you know, no or yes. And then the one person that they didn't give it, the person goes out and shoots the spouse. But right. the reality is... It's a, all it is a protection is a bunch of crap. It's a piece of paper. If you're really serious that somebody needs protection, give them a handgun when they go in there to get it. If so you're going to give them the paper, give them a gun. Because this paper is not protection. Okay, so yeah. that's not so much an order of protection. It's a weapon against your ex. That's what it is, yeah. Accusation about abuse, whether it's sexual it or destroys, physical. Case it destroys the judge's they, ability they to make a order. decision. One parent does not have access to the children. And it takes years to, to prove that that's not the case. And it, it never right. goes away, so, even so if you get found guilty. And, and it, it disproves the ability of a judge to make a clear decision yeah. once, they're, once they're faced with the... Right. Who's going to... Well, and what judge is going to say, justice. right, exactly. yeah. you know what? Yeah. The guy got off, I'm going to oh, give it to it him. Is, yeah. And then look, God forbid something happens. That's scary. It's, it's scary. I wouldn't want to be a judge in that position. Me either. To give a yeah. child to a person who, who's got two or three or five or six allegations of abuse against them. And right. even though they got off, do you want to be the judge? Who, who put the kid and the kid gets killed. I wouldn't want to be, not me. It's a bad position. So right. I, I do sympathize, but they got to crack down on these allegations and prosecute. You know what? If you made a false allegation and the other person can prove it, you're done with custody. Not only that, but do more of a background or investigation as to once an allegation is made rather than on the fly like a make a decision. A criminal case. case. Regarding, uh, this is just our particular, it's not about the, uh, the divorce court. I want to get back to that at some point, but there's a separate court now have the, the, the combined court, IDV, domestic violence. Yeah. Integrated domestic violence. What, 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 what is that? What happens? I heard a lot of people go through that and it's just like a waste of time. I don't understand what's happening. The whole th you know what? To me, the whole courts, all they do is to come back, come back, come back, and they hope that time goes away. Time goes on. Well, the money Somebody runs gives out. up. The money runs out and Absolutely. you all go to trial. That's all this. Like you said, Chris, you go to the yeah. court, they keep building the parking lots. Yeah. You can go there, you know, five days a week in a freaking snowstorm. And there's a line at the family court, a line at the Supreme Court, a line line at the federal court. You'll never get big enough. Absolutely. You know, there's, yeah. th th there's a lot, there's third, you look at the dockets, there's a printout of, you know, 40 pages for every judge. They keep you there because eventually they don't, judge doesn't want to make a decision. So eventually you're going to, and it works. Listen, they're not stupid. It works. Right. You run out of court. money, what do you do? Sign the stipulation of settlement. Well, so, where, where did, did all these right. people go in 1963 before the family court started in 64? Where did all these people get divorced? You never saw them. You hardly heard about them. Divorce wasn't so prominent. Like but, we but said, I, well, I the cultural issue right. we talked about before. Well, prior to 1969, 400,000 divorces compared to 1.2 million. Yeah. Right. That's a big difference. It was also, I remember when people growing up, somebody, my neighbor, their parents got divorced. And it was like, 
you know, oh my God, they got divorced, how horrible it is. But they also, it, it was, since it wasn't acceptable, I think they made, I think that they would, they didn't try to fight all this out in court with police, because you were sort of ashamed that you were getting divorced. Right, well, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Now, now it's now like, you can oh, do it who just, cares? The yeah. we, listen, when the police came to my house the first time, I never had the police there, mm -hmm. I'll be getting divorced. The guy says to me, the police officer, well, we're gonna be seeing a lot of you in the next couple of years. I said, what do you mean? He, he was right, mm -hmm. he knew it. He knew as soon as the divorce started, he came once, if once that person's willing to cross the line, and call the police and make a false allegation, they're, they're gonna do it over and over and over again. It's horrible. What else did the uh, movie project that maybe we haven't talked about yet? I know it's They statistics. talked a lot about the attorneys contributing to the judges' campaigns, which, which I was shocked to see that, and then some of these attorneys would be before the same judges that they contribute to campaigns. And I understand judges have to get contributions to run and, and attorneys, who else is gonna contribute other than attorneys, but then, isn't it a conflict if that same attorney is before the judge with this case? Yeah, Susan Centabrino, who we had, I met her there, by the way. She's the uh, former attorney who uh, wrote the book, uh, UncheckedPower.org. And she always talks about that whole, there's a whole circle of just corruption in the election process. Well, like you said, you had people, on, you had judges on your show to talk about why they should become judges, but they're not allowed to talk about almost all their positions. Yeah. So how can you elect them if you can't, if you couldn't ask them on your show, do you believe in shared parenting? And if you became a judge, would you grant shared parenting if you could? You can't ask them that. Yeah. Can't. It was funny is that so, they, when the well, when the crazy, yeah. when the lights went down and the cameras were off, they they circled this right here around this table and we talked about the real issues. Right. What am I? What because, was I doing here before right, that? Yeah. <laughs> they can't. It's, it's a crazy system that we have. It's and it's political. So right. they get involved yeah. in they, they donate have to protect they themselves. The donations really get yeah, in the way. Yeah, it's crazy. It should, to me, it should be appointed. There should be a committee taken out of the political process. Right. You know, of citizens. You know what? You know what him and I are going to say. What's that? Avoid it, Avoid going to court altogether. Well, don't don't but, ever but put listen, yourself have, in jeopardy like that. But there does like have that. to be some judges, and the way we do it is, is wrong. I say okay. stay out of court. Again, if, if you're an attorney, Gary, and you contribute to the campaign of Judge Jones, you just call me an attorney. <laughs> if, if you're an attorney, what an insult. Okay. If you're an attorney, okay. and you contribute to Judge Jones. And now, you, and now you're litigating a family law case, and you're up before Judge Jones. Then it's got to be that it's got to, Judge Jones got to say, wait a second, you know, Gary contributed to my campaign. That That's was right. legal, but I can't hear this case. Judge, right. uh, you know, blank has got to hear this so case. That but, but, what, but what they'll do is then they'll just do it. They'll find back ways around. We'll give it to a committee who's going to give it to the, you know. So there's a, once you're taking once judges need money to run, that's the end of it. Yeah. Once you put the money again, that's with the kids. Right. When you put the money with the kids. That's it. It's done. There's always going to be a problem. There's a financial incentive. For, listen, how many times the moneyed spouse almost always loses child support? Is that a coincidence? Yeah. You, you, what, you think the moneyed spouse are, are bad parents all the time? Right. <laughs> no, but they always lose custody. Not only that, but they wind up paying for the other spouse's legal fees also. attorneys. I tell people all the time, when they come in and they say, oh, I'm the better parent. I was home with the kid. I did this. I did this. I'm, this, I'm emotionally stable. My ex has got crazy, is and a narcissist. Know, and I say to them, you know what I say? Forget all that, who makes more money? <laughs> well, I make more money, but I'm available on the weekends. I'm available, you just lost. You know, it, there's so many outrages. When, when I got divorced for the first time, the child support obligation was so high. I was so punished and so messed up for like four or five years after I lost my retirement account. There's a whole bunch of things happened wrong. Then she calls me up one day after I was in big trouble. She said, you can have the kid. I can't take care of him anymore. When I got custody, I was married again. And my second wife said, you know what? Let's go after her. I said, well, what she did to you, you should go after her. She, she, I couldn't do it. I said, sometimes the buck has to stop somewhere. Yeah. And it, it, you don't have that opportunity to say no all the time. But I was able to say no at that time. And I'm glad I Listen, did. I, but I, I don't I was, want any involvement. I, went, I wanted to do shared custody, but I was fighting for custody. It's a perfect example. And I told the, everybody involved, the law guardian, I told the, you know, the judge, everybody, look, if I get custody, I will, I'll give up child support. How's that? So now you can't think I have any right. financial incentive. Right. Will right. my ex do the same thing? Right. That's right. Nope, she Obviously won't. Obviously not. So she there you need go. the money. Fi final minute, Jeff. We, Real quick, we, 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 we should definitely continue this conversation and, and mm -hmm. do a couple of uh, shows on this because it's, it's interesting topics. There's a lot of intricacies in the litigation system that people should be aware of. And, and our whole idea is to get people educated we so they can make educated decisions. We covered it in a, uh, in a broader sense now, in an overall sense now. Maybe we can be more specific in the future. We'll give it a shot. Thank you very much, Gary and Jeff. Societal and political trends are rapidly breaking down the family. The once was the cornerstone of our great American culture. And at FIT TV, we always accept the positive views. My name is Chris Maggio. Thank you for watching FIT TV, and we'll see you again next week.